This video covers installation of flow sensing using the ESP LXMEF. The ESP LXME requires two components to add flow sensing. The first component is the flow smart module. This module comes pre-installed in the ESP LXMEF model, or you can purchase it as an add-on to replace the base module. Flow smart modules are designed to use Rainbird FS series flow sensors. This is the FS150P, which is the one and half inch plastic T model. It has two wires coming out of it, red and black. These wires connect to the terminals labeled flow plus and minus. We recommend using a shielded cable. Shielding protects the flow sensor wire from picking up signals from power wires that may be in the ground that could be station wires, master valve wires, or power wires for other equipment. Shielding prevents the flow sensor from picking up and creating false pulses in the flow smart module. Flow sensing on the ESP LXME with a flow smart module is configured via smart module. Turn the dial to module programming and select flow smart module. Select the first item on the list, which is the flow sensor setup. Then use the plus and minus keys to scroll through the list of Rainbird FS series flow sensor model numbers and choose the appropriate one. Press next. The second menu item is SEEF and self settings. SEEF stands for seek and eliminate excessive flow. So these settings are for high flow detection. The default is 130% of the normal flow rate and the settling time defaults to three minutes, which means the flow condition needs to exist for three minutes before any action is taken. Press Next and choose the desired reaction if high flow is detected. The default is Diagnose and Eliminate. This will diagnose whether the problem is on the main line or downstream of one of the valves that was operating when the high flow was detected, and it will identify the problem valve. Press Next to view the self settings. SELF stands for Seek and Eliminate Low Flow. The default setting is 70% or 30% below the normal flow rate. Again, the default is a 3-minute settling time, along with Diagnose and Eliminate as the default reaction. One optional screen is Delay to Re-enable. This would reset any flow alarms and quarantines that take place after a certain amount of time, which you can set. We recommend leaving this set to zero, which is to not re-enable. Instead, wait until you fix the problem and then manually re-enable the system. The next step is for the controller to learn the station flow rates. There's a utility called Learn Flow, which learns the normal flow rates of each station. The final setting is Flow Watch, or Flow Sensing, which you want to turn on. Once enabled, we'll be able to see the real-time current flow rate from the auto screen. As stations run, it will give us the current flow rate of the stations. For more in-depth information, go to Flow Module Status Style and enable the View Current Flow option. This indicates what the current flow rate is, what the current expected flow rate is, and the deviation percentage. If we end up with a flow alarm, the alarm light comes on. If I press the alarm button, it will tell me I have a flow alarm. To view or clear these alarms, turn back to Module Status and select View Flow Alarms. The alarms are divided into Station Flow Alarms and Mainline Flow Alarms. You can view alarms in both categories. Once the problems are resolved, Select Clear Flow Alarms to reset the system. Be sure to visit rainbird.com slash ESPLX series for product manuals and FAQs. You can also call us for free professional support for programming and troubleshooting.